Guys, there are three major mistakes that I see ETF buyers making. First one, they sell their ETF to buy the hype. Guys, last year was insane. The S&P was up 20 plus percent, but the Magnificent 7 crushed that. So a lot of people out there thought to themselves, why should I buy this ETF? Why should I own this one? I can sell that and follow the Magnificent 7. Guys, hype's exciting. And I know FOMO is a very, very common feeling amongst a lot of investors, but you have a plan. You buy the ETF to hit a plan. Retirement is your plan. I'm not telling you don't buy the Magnificent Seven. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is stick to your plan. If you're sticking to your plan and you buy your ETFs month in, month out without thinking, and your plan is coming along, and you're focused on that. If you have extra money, do whatever you want with it. Have fun. Go ride it. Go YOLO it. I don't care. But do not sacrifice this to make short-term gains here. That's going to suffer your returns in the long run. Because what happens is, what if you risk the money you have to get money you don't need, and it doesn't work out? You're going to end up playing catch-up. And that's when the most mistakes are made. All right, guys, let's talk about the second one. The second one is very, very common right now. Waiting for a crash. A lot of people are sitting there saying, Paul, I hear you saying the market's overpriced and there's probably a crash coming. Shouldn't I sell everything and wait for it and then buy later? No, absolutely not. Remember, you have a plan for retirement. And guess what? You never know what's going to happen in that plan. Go look at COVID. We had over a 30-day period, the market fell 40%, 40%. The world was shutting down. When the market bottomed, I think the U.S. only had 5,000 COVID cases. We had hundreds of millions within a year and a half. We thought the world was going to shut down for a very long time. And then guess what happens? The market crashed like this and then whoosh, went up on a massive, massive high. If you recall, maybe some of you don't. The high of the S&P before COVID was 33.93. Where are we at now? 49.50. We went down to 21, 2090, I think, and then straight up to 49.50. That's why you cannot try to time these things. You don't know what's going to happen. And all along the way, that was four years ago now. You'd been putting money in and in and in and growing from 2100 to 4950. Even the money you had here at 33.93, falling to 20, 2090 would be worth so much more today. And that's why you cannot try to time the market. Remember, you have a plan for retirement. Stick to it. Good news, bad news, whatever it is, stick to it. Which leads me to number three, losing trust. Guys, when COVID crashed, when the great financial crisis occurred, when the dot-com bubble burst, you lose trust. The story for stocks to fall so much has to be a scary story. And in the middle of it, you're probably scared going, what is going on in this world? I need to get out of my stocks. No, guys, you can't do that. When you're, the market is falling, you cannot sell. Do not sell. That is an absolute no-no. Why? Think about our history. I was born in 1981. Since then, we've had presidential assassination attempts. How many, world, how many wars, not world wars, but pretty close to it. How many, how many recessions? How many great financial crises? All these things have happened. And guess what? When I was born, the S&P was around 110, give or take. Now it's 49.50. It's up 45 times since I was born with all of that bad news. Do not lose faith in the U.S. economy. The U.S. economy will continue to grow. And as the U.S. economy grows, what's going to happen to your ETF? That's SPY or VOO or whatever it is. It's going to keep going up. Will it have drawbacks? Absolutely. You should expect in your working lifetime several major 40 or 50% drops and a lot of 10 or 20% drops. That's your opportunity to buy more. Stick to your plan. Make it robotic so you don't have to worry about it. Don't get yourself immersed too much in the news. When you immerse yourself too much in the news, you're going to sit there and you're going to have fear and the fear is going to make you do something you don't want to do. You do not want to lose trust. That's absolutely the last thing you want to do. There are two ways to overcome these. First off, it's the emotion. Guys, I've talked about this. This is the stock market over time, but this is how the pricing works. And at these points, nothing can go wrong. At these points, nothing can go right. At COVID crash, Bill Ackman, one of the best investors of all time, was on TV talking about, hey, 
if we're shut down for 18 months, if this happens, hotels are going to zero, we're not going to have hotels, et cetera. But then something very interesting, they started showing all his purchases. He was buying hotel stocks at dirt cheap prices. Why? Because he's got a better emotion. He's got a better emotion than me and a lot of people. But take that to your advantage. Learn from that and say, wait a second, we will rebound. What kind of world do they have to live in where hotels go to zero? If hotels actually went to zero, if the U.S. economy actually went to zero, doesn't matter how much is in your Roth IRA or 401k. It doesn't matter. What matters is who has the most guns and who has the most land at that point. So you might as well make the bet on it. The time you feel the most fearful, the time to be the most aggressive with your ETF buying. Okay. If you can actually increase your buying along the way, and guess what? You might start increasing it over here and it's going to keep going lower. And you're going to say, what the heck? That's what's so great about buying ETFs. You're making a bet on an economy, not on an individual company. That is what's so wonderful about it. So if you automate this thing, if you make it robotic, buying every single month, automatically take that out of your account and buy every single month, it takes a lot of this out of there. The emotion is removed. A lot of it's removed. In our community, we love the down days. People are there when the days are red. People are like, this is awesome. Keep going. That's the kind of emotion I want you to have. That's why our community is so effective because people in there are cheering on cheaper prices. Imagine that world where people cheer on cheaper prices. That's the kind of world we want to live in. We want to root for better deals. For some reason, the stock market's the only place in the world where things go on sale and people scream and yell and, and leave the store. Not us. We want to sit there and I want you to learn that, that it's better when prices go down. Unless, of course, you're a few years away from retirement, to which I would say you probably shouldn't have so much money in stocks. But that's a different story altogether. So with dollar cost averaging, I've shown this a thousand times. You're buying all the way up all the way down like clockwork. And guess what you average? You're going to average this along the way. For those of you who have a little more emotional fortitude, if stocks go below their long-term average value, increase your buying. That's the thing to do. Now, it takes a little bit more to be able to do that because stocks can stay undervalued for a very long time. Just like now, stocks have been overvalued since 2013 over the historical average going back to 1929. Isn't that incredible? But for those of you who have a long-term plan, it should not matter to you. Absolutely should not matter. Guys, for your foundational plan to get to retirement or whatever financial goal you have, we're all worried about a plan and that a plan should involve ETFs. Again, doesn't mean don't buy individual stocks, but your main plan should involve ETFs. So if you're interested in that, watch our next video on the one ETF you should own forever.